Linda, you should be a co-host as well, so you can unmute and mute freely. Um, and we should be live on Facebook as well. So if you're ready okay. to start. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. And, and thanks for joining us on this uh, somewhat snowy uh, or brisk December day. We're really thrilled to be here uh, to, to, for a, a very special program. My name is Masha Turchinsky. I am the, uh, the director and CEO of the Hudson River Museum. And today we're going to be exploring a uh, really exciting topic, our art, ourselves. Artists embrace their role in the community and beyond. Uh, this is a talk that is in conjunction with our uh, current exhibition, Women to the Fore. Let me pull up a slide on that. Okay, there we go. Uh, it, this talk is in conjunction with the exhibition Women to the Fore, which brings together 150 years of art made by women uh, and, and female identifying artists in conversation with one another. Um, the, the exhibition was curated by uh, Laura Vukels, uh, chief, the chair of our curatorial department, as well as uh, Victoria McKenna Ratchin, curatorial assistant at the Hudson River Museum. Uh, the show is on view through January 3rd. And today we have the great pleasure of talking to three artists who made a, a wonderful mural uh, that we're going to look at in depth. And the artists are Katori Walker, Nancy Mendez, and Patricia Santos. And why don't we advance? Okay, and today I wanna to say thanks to those who are working on presenting this program with us. Um, in addition to the artists I just mentioned, um, Olivia Cipriano is, uh, is our manager of programs and operations and Sarah Linda Lichtblau is the assistant director of education. And so just a few notes about how this runs. Your audio will be off by default and we will use the chat feature. We'll look forward to your questions. We'll try to answer them as best we can. I will just let you know that we, I will be moderating those and we'll get some other questions in from the, the live Facebook. And what I'd like to do is what we will try to answer as many as we can, because I think you'll have questions as we go forward it, through the conversation, but I'd like to give some space first to the artist to talk about their practice, and then we'll definitely have time for Q&A at the end. All right. So welcome to Patricia and Katori and Nancy, and to everyone Hi. who is joining us. Hi. So <laughs> a minute just to say, to, to point you out on the Zooms here. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom windows. It's a pleasure. Um, so if we could go to the next slide, I think what I'd like to do is you're going to get to actually meet each artist and, and hear directly from them. So uh, why don't we go to the next slide? Are you seeing? Okay. No, not yet. Okay, sorry. I think we have a little bit of lag going on today, so just bear with us. Thank you. <laughs> I apologize. Well, in the meantime, well, um, uh, if you want in the chat, just so I know how many people have seen the exhibition, if you want to just you know chime in on the side, this will help me know uh, who has seen it in person, uh, who has explored it online. Um, and I look forward to, that will definitely be part of our conversation, maybe your own experiences uh, uh, coming coming face to face with this work. So if you have seen it, just let us know in the chat while we get ourselves up and running. And um, I'm gonna take this, this advantage just to stop for a moment and, um, and let just quickly Katori and Nancy and Patricia say hello. Oh, good, explore online. So uh, why don't I start with Patricia while we're waiting here, why don't we uh, let you just say a quick hello and we'll get Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Patricia Santos. I'm known as Patty in the community here in Yonkers. I'm born and raised uh, in Yonkers. I, I'm very passionate about the city. I'm very passionate about um, bringing change and healing into, into the community through art. Um, my, myself and Nancy Mendez, we're co-founders of the We Art One Collective here in Yonkers. It's a, um, a Yonkers-based non-for-profit organization that gives back to the community through art. We create a safe space for local artists and just people that are just trying to tap into their creative selves. So that's 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 a little bit about me. That's great, um, thank again. you. I know we'll get to see, hear about you more in depth shortly, but uh, that's yes. great. And then uh, let's see, Katori, why don't you say a few words of introduction before we get to your main slides? 
Okay, so just briefly, I'm Katori Walker, and I am a Yonkers-based artist. I'm really excited about the seniors and the children in the community, and so I've been doing a lot of work along with other people, collaborating, making sure that everyone has a chance to express themselves and also get some healing using art. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Katori. And, um, and Nancy, could you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy Mendez. I'm a Yonkers native and resident. Um, I do a little bit of everything. Um, as Patty mentioned, I'm also part of the New York Lung Collective. Um, I also work with a And Nancy, I, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to ask you, could you lean a little closer to your mic, maybe? Sure. Great. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a Yonkers native and resident. Um, I, as Patty mentioned, I'm also part of the We Are One uh, Artist Collective in Yonkers. Um, I also worked with the adjudicated youth in the Bronx um, and um, an artist. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Okay, so let's see, Olivia, are you ready to do a share again now? Um, I apologize. Can you guys see my screen yet? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, I am having a bit of trouble. I might ask Sarah Linda to share screen for me. Now we're going up. Okay. Oh, okay, so now we're up. Um, let's um, it's there now, but I'm standing by, Olivia. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we just need to go into presentation mode. Yep, all right. Do you okay. see it now? Yes, here we are. Okay. Oh, Okay, so I know that uh, there are those of you who have seen it, I see in the chat, that's great, and others have explored it online. Um, so here we have the mural that is, as you walk into the exhibition, Two Women to the Fore, this is, and you, uh, you descend the stairs, this is the mural that for the, as an introduction to this exploration of work uh, across, again, in the span of 150 years, an artist in conversation. And I know I was really excited to be able to, uh, to have the museum work, uh, welcome and work with uh, these three wonderful artists who I not, not only admire as artists, but I also admire as people um, and, and, and very and activists in our, in our community. Um, if, um, if you live here in Yonkers, as I do, then it is very likely that your, uh, your, your maybe your daily commute or um, a particular street that you have walked by um, has been imp greatly improved and enlivened by the experience. And if you're, you've walked past maybe um, the, the Yoho Studios, for example, where there's a wonderful mural, um, or you've passed by what was formerly um, uh, you know, an overlooked space. Um, you probably have experienced a, a wonderful mural by one of these three women um, who have taken it into their own hands, um, the improvement of our public spaces. So again, I, I admire them not only as artists, but as people and making um, our community better every day. So welcome again to the three of you. And so what I'd like to do is go to that picture for a moment and we're going to all explore a few, uh, a few get a sense of this mural and look at a few details. And then uh, so that we all have a basis for um, who you are. And then we're going to get a chance to actually look at the, the path that these three women took to, to become co-muralists. Um, so, so Olivia, would you mind going to that? So I actually am having, I just got kicked out. Um, so if somebody else, uh, if Sarah Linda could please share the PowerPoint while I am, um, just trying to figure out some connectivity issues that would be uh, much appreciated. So I think in the interest of time so that we, we, uh, we will have visuals while this is all getting booted up. Um, Katori, I'm gonna start with you. We will get your visuals um, in a moment, but why don't you tell us about yourself and your path to becoming an artist? Okay, I did not was gonna start first, so this is exciting. <laughs> Okay, so um, Katori, let's just start with the basics of the name. Katori is an acronym that starts with kids are treasures, our real inspiration. And I started to use that name as I developed as an artist. But I didn't know I was going to be an artist. I had no idea. Um, I don't know if everyone has had experience of when you start off in life and you think you're going to do something and be something and then okay. so many things happen and you turn mm -hmm. around and you find out, wow, how did I even get here? Mm 
And that happened with me. Um, my kids that I paint represent a part of me giving birth to the world, giving birth to each child that comes to me um, is painted. And I didn't know why I was painting these kids. I know it was a healing process for me. Um, it stemmed from a dark place of being drugged, kidnapped, and then raped. Instead of painting hate um, and, and things like that, um, I just started to paint these kids. And there's a saying in my um, um, in my ancestry, Guyanese, which is Guyanese, and it says, "Cat a catch rat, but he a teeth he massa fish." And what that means is using that something that evil and good come from the same place. Mm -hmm. So as I was painting this evil that happened to me, good was happening. So. I was raised by two great grandmothers and two grandmothers and my mom. So there's a lot of wisdom that came and that the roots of each one having their own separate beliefs, which were completely different. So you can imagine I had to act differently each time I was around each one. But I think this all made me become the woman that I am today. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your lived experiences and um, and and for being and your candor and I and I want to say that that I think there I um, these are the conversations that I, so often women um, have a sense that they're not supposed to share and I would say that uh, I I am I am very sure that there is someone on this call today who really uh, who 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 took your words to heart just now um, I want to move forward through um, if we could just. Katori, I'd like to follow up with, because we've started with you and your, your works, I'd like to actually now jump to your slides so that we can actually see some of the visuals and we'll come back to the murals. So because we, since we started talking about Katori's work, we'll come back. So we're just coming through. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so Katori, with, with uh, your words in mind that you just shared with us, could you talk to us about some of the works that we see here? Okay, yes, this guitar is very important because I did grow up partially here in New York, in Puerto Rico and St. Thomas. So La Catada is basically about the women, the two women that really helped raise me, which was my mom and this beautiful woman in Puerto Rico. And, you know, the choice was made for me um, that I couldn't have children because after the rape, that's what happened. And I had to finally accept the fact that my womb would never experience life. So this guitar just kind of represents to me that although I cannot have children, I can still be a, a beautiful, musical, loving, healing person. Mm -hmm. And so I created this um, to share with the world um, that music is love, music is life. And for me, it's just, it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Thank, uh, thank you. Uh, let's. I'd like to see these others uh, again. We, you mentioned nurturing, um, and so I think we're going to see some of that coming through here in your work. So, uh, could you tell us a bit about this? Yes, this is mornings with mommy, and this was when my mother worked three jobs here in New York: an emergency room. She was a nurse, and she worked as a. Uh, she became a director later on in life, but in an emergency room, and she was just doing so many different things. I only got to see her like at five a.m. in the morning. So this was my representation of her doing my hair in the morning um, when it seemed like it was so dark, but it was blue dark. And the teddy bear is my innocence and my mom, the colors all represent something, you know? So there's my mom green, nurturing, okay? Plant and life. And she's, you know, doing my hair in the morning. Very nice. Thank you. That's a, <laughs> that, and, and you know, there's, there are other images of, of that of those moments in, in Women to the Forest. So this is very appropriate here. Um, can we see the next image or two? Ah, that follow. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Forever friends. So I don't know about everybody, but sometimes in your life, I'm sure you've gotten a best friend <laughs> somehow that you remember fond memories. So when I paint these Katori kids here, it's to bring out that memory, that innocence, and they're 
they're again facing out. You never see their faces. Although I do other artwork where you do see the face, but if we're talking about Katori kids, they're going on a journey and they're going to be friends forever. And the butterflies are transformation going on to their journey in life. But this is a forever bond. So I know maybe. Maybe some of you might have friends that you've known since you were a little girl or a little boy. And so this is a representation of that. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's see the next images that you have just chosen. Oh, yes. Tell us about this. I think, again, this, this goes back to my early comment about taking a walk through the streets of Yonkers. Right. So this is a mural that's next to the um, city hall. And um, it's part of Daylighting 3, where they're putting in the parks and re um, uh, redoing and restructuring and bringing back um, the original river that runs underneath. And this is representing the uh, habitat that's coming back and thriving that once was there before, but now in abundance. So you have the eagles are now coming back more, the turtles, you know, butterflies, the different, different types of fish and crabs and stuff. So I was asked to create something that would bring that um, uh, representation um, to the area. So I felt that um, I wanted bright colors. I wanted to be almost kid-like because most of my, my art is about bringing out that inner child. So adults enjoy my work as well as children. And so every day when you walk by, you see this bright box. And I was even told that it better be good because, <laughs> and somebody thought that it was gonna be an ice cream um, stand, you know, but the community came, talked to me, one lady, and I have to shout her out. I don't know if she's even watching, but I wanna thank you. Um, Evan did assist me in this mural and um, every day she bought, almost every day she bought bagels and um, eggs with bagels, eggs and cheese and water and food. And then people started bringing us food and water. I was like, hmm, hey, if I don't have money for lunch, I'll just stand next to my box. Um, but yes, this is for the community, for them to remember um, the animal life and the beauty that's there. Great, thank you. And let's just, uh, let's continue on with the other, some other images. So this is a representation of garden shed collaborations that I do um, and um, throughout the Bronx. This is just one that, um, again, Evan and I did and the Katori kids are there. And so this is in a, we do community gardens and sheds um, we're asked to do. And sometimes we do them with other organizations with the children. So this is one that we did in, again, bringing life into a, a community gar garden that was um, completely, you know, most of them d have been abandoned or disheveled. And so we bring it back to life with sheds. Excellent. Thank you. Let's keep, uh-huh. Okay. And this is one that's next uh, across from Empire, um, in Empire Casino in Yonkers. Mm -hmm. And um, I was asked to do something to celebrate the veterans that we support the veterans. They wanted that there. So that was my mural. And this was a challenge because I'm not a fan of straight lines, <laughs> but I enjoyed doing it. And also the street doesn't, is the, the building is not straight. So the, the illusion that it's straight, you know, was a challenge, but I love doing it. Great, thank you. Okay, let's see what, what else we have here. Oh, okay, tell us about this one. Okay, so this is just an example. As I said, I do other things. So I wanted to show an example. This is called Afro Power. So this is really about um, embracing your, your the beauty within. Um, there are a lot of, um, you know, um, uh, I wanted everyone to feel, not just a, a children, but also adults to just, you know, feel the, the power and use rocks because rocks are solid. The foundation is there and I wanted to do is so I said wouldn't it be cool to have like an afro with rocks and just symbolize the beauty and femininity of women and it doesn't matter I think this kind of doesn't matter you don't have to be African-American to appreciate this this is just showing you know power we all have that afro in it, us I believe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I can see as we go through that material makes you that you make a lot of choices about material in your work uh, can we see the next couple of slides please oh, here we go yeah, so um, um, 320 Body Art is about healing and adoring the body with art. So another way, I think I'm multidisciplinary artist because I do different things. This is with doing, I did this particular um, body art right here, but um, um, Evan Bishop, again, we do body art where he's painting um, and I am doing Reiki and I'm bringing you back to your ancestry. So it's this whole thing of combining, we want you to feel the art, that you're part of the art with the brush strokes. And so people, and I know, you know, my comrades here, 
have experienced this as well. And they can attest that you kind of go into this journey, this world, and then you wake up and you have artwork on you. Mm -hmm. And it's just a beautiful experience. Again, people have said that they get so relaxed and so calm that they can think. So it's a way of creating you to be able to not have stress in the noisiest places. We do this in clubs or anywhere that's crazy and loud and you get to focus and really be one with the artwork. Great, thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, yes, and oh, this one, this is an interesting project that impacted Westchester. Yes, it did. It was amazing and just real quickly, um, it was free and open to everyone. We went and created about 30 creation stations where people can come um, and paint and express themselves. They can paint, draw, or write something. And we were supposed to do 500, I mean, I think it was 100. It ended up 1,300 people participated. And um, it, it, and it was about community and bringing everyone. The, the youngest person I think was like a couple of months old to my great, to my grandmother who is 99 years old right now. Yep. So imagine all these people coming together and creating um, a swatch that represented who they are or what they felt they wanted to express. Yes, and I think actually some people even on this call might have participated because I know that uh, we had some sessions at the Hudson River Museum when people were able to, to do a patch of a part of the quilt. Okay, wonderful. I think, is that the last image for Katori? Before we, oh, and there's just an example of, of something in motion. Right, so I just wanted to put it in there that I do art classes and Zoom classes and it's very healing to me to see, it's very, I think this is very healing for the children because I do sound meditation and I do, you know, other things that I incorporate with the children. So they meditate before they start, they get still, and then they get to connect with their self. I give them challenging questions and then they start their, their art. So um, I think that, you know, I like to bring all different components um, and, and get people to really feel and think about like who they are and, 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 and to really enjoy the process of their expression and there's no judgment. Uh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katori. So uh, this is great now. Uh, now this is wonderful. And this will provide a lot of context for our other conversation when we go back to the mural. Uh, we're going to go next to Patricia Santos. Um, and Patricia, would you tell us again, uh, for those of you who joined, just, just to refresh for those who might've joined just a few minutes late on the call and uh, about your work and, and your path to, be, to becoming a, a professional artist. Um, hi. <laughs> okay, great. Um, my, um, so my path is similar, a little bit similar to Katori, whereas I didn't know that I was going to be an artist. I didn't think that, you know, this was, I, I had another calling. Um, I basically joined in the whole art field within my friend who is a art therapist. She introduced me to art and was going through a hard time in my life. And she was just like, you know, ex express yourself through paint. I started expressing myself. And then with that, I ended up going on a service trip to Dominican Republic and working with kids. Um, Cause I'm a, my profession is I'm a teacher. Um, and I, I ended up going to DR and working with the kids through art therapy, dance therapy. And I started to see that this is a, a form of healing. You know, art can really heal um, kids and it can heal yourself. And, and that just kind of put the battery in my back and said, you know, I want to bring this back to my community. Like this is something that my community needs. Um, they need to know that this is a form of healing. And um, it's also a form of healing throughout my, within my walk and, and, and my journey. So um, my experience in Dominican Republic with the children out there was the, um, was the, the light bulb for me to say that I am an artist and art is a healing form and it is meant to share with everyone. And I, I strongly believe that everyone is an artist in their own way. Sure. And so why don't you walk us through some of the images that you have chosen to share okay. today? All right, so this this particular piece is called Gracefully Haunted. Um, this is uh, uh, acrylic on canvas with wax paper. I do a lot of molding. Um, I love to do molding because, you know, we tend to kind of want to mold the way we see our lives 
the way we want to, to predict how our lives should be. Um, I think that a lot of times we want to be in control of it. So the back of, of this, this uh, particular piece, if you can zoom in, you probably, I don't know if you can, but the back is demons. They're a representation of demons that we carry as women, um, that they're, they're, they're a part of us, but they don't have to define us. The dress is graceful. Um, because we can walk away from our demons gracefully. It's going to be, a, it's going to be there, but we can still walk away from it gracefully. So that's Gracefully Haunted. It's a very um, strong piece. A lot of people love it. Um, I love it. This is called Flow. Um, it's basically just a movement of flowing, flowing within, you know, your life, your life and, and just kind of just flowing with the, the feelings, the thoughts and, um, and not letting um, distractions get a hold of you, just kind of flowing with everything. This is called play. Um, I, I thought of the kids that I work with in Dominican Republic. They're very, they, they're full of life. And I think of like when they, they do a lot of drawings, they do a lot of shapes and um, it's just really playful. Um, so I, I, that's, it's called play. <laughs> okay. Um, this one is connection. So I always feel like everyone is connected in their own ways. Um, I feel like the lines are always crossed, but we're still connected. Um, and that's why I love doing abstracts, sort of abstract art, because you can feel it, but then you might not have the, you, you, I, I, when I was painting this, I didn't know what it was about. And then when I was done, I was just like, you know, especially in Yonkers, in my community, I find that everyone is completely connected. So. Wonderful. Um, this one is, this was actually for an exhibition that was called What is Democracy? Um, and for me, it's just like, you, you, you make it your own. Um, and particularly, I just, I, I, I love the lady, the Statue of Liberty, and I wanted to embody that in this piece. Mm -hmm. Let's thank you. Next one. And this one's Twin Flame. Um, this is a piece that I was represented. I represented to like within my partner. Um, him and I are very much connected in our own ways. Uh, but yeah, like where it's just basically Twin Flame, like the the connection between um, your partner and yourself. Yeah. Great. And this one is vulnerability. This is another three D piece that I made. Um, I'm. My mother, I come from a very, uh, like my, my family carries a lot of, there's a lot of trauma. Um, I think a lot of suppressed emotions, emotions. Um, and I think that that carries on through generations and generations. And I find that vulnerability is something that's really important to kind of break the cycle, um, especially within, you know, my, uh, within our generation. So for, for me, that was just vulnerability and embracing the vulnerability, embracing all, all of the struggles and things that we go through and looking at it as, as it's beautiful because her body is completely filled with flowers. Beautiful. And this one is called, yeah, this one's hair love, body love. Um, my culture is very difficult for us to embody and embrace our hair. Um, and that, that was a big thing within my journey, uh, embracing my hair, embracing uh, my African descent. I'm Dominican, but I know that there's, I have a lot of African ancestors in, within me. And um, throughout my journey, I, was, I had to kind of realize, you know, my hair is a big part of my journey. Um, my natural hair is a big thing. And that's something that I strongly talk about to the young women in our community. So I wanted to embody that in this piece. Great, and we're going to go back now to, um, to uh, thank you, roll on the side. Wonderful, okay, here we go to Nancy Mendez. All right, Nancy, welcome. And uh, again, if you wouldn't mind summarizing about yourself and then also you know, your background and how you became um, committed to, to pursuing uh, the arts as a professional career. Sure. So, um, hi, everybody. Um, so, I was born and raised in Yonkers. Uh, my mother is Ecuadorian and my dad is Puerto Rican. Um, I get my art skills from my mama. Uh, she would always draw, but um, in Ecuador, it was something that she couldn't pursue. Um, it was very difficult. Um, she was, you know, her and her family were poor, so she had to, uh, she came to the States and uh, she kind of left art kind of like a hobby she never pursued it um and she kind of wanted the same for me um she wanted me to be a nurse or you know just something that she felt 
would, you know, be more secure. But of course, I rebelled and said, no, art is what I want to do. Um, art is who I was. I've always drawn and it's just who I am. I'm an artist. Um, and so I pursued it. And I didn't have the support um, that I expected to receive from my parents. But at the same time, um, I, I understood why. Um, because they came from poverty and and although they, my father uh, was good at carpentry and they, they loved doing carpentry or drawing, they couldn't pursue it because they wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't be able to provide for their family. So mm -hmm. when it came to supporting me, um, I didn't get that um, and it hurt, but it gave me a fuel, like it, it gave me, it, it put more coal to the fire and it, and it gave me um, more, more desire to, to, to push forward. And so um, I put myself through college um, and I worked and I became independent, got my degree. Um, and I was the first to graduate uh, in my family with a bachelor's degree and the first to get a job as soon as I graduated in the art industry. Um, I worked as an art coordinator uh, and I, I realized then I didn't want to do that. I wanted to just kind of do my own thing. Um, so I did. And um, I'm proud to say that I, I'm actually in the process right now of getting my master's in art education. So, and I've, I'm doing it, I, I've done it all alone, all, all, all alone. And I'm grateful uh, uh, that my mother and my father at the time didn't support me because I needed that. I needed that push because I had to believe in myself. Um, and now they're just like, oh, my daughter this, my daughter that. So she, they're, you know, they're proud of me. And, and, and that means a lot. Um, so this, most of the, all these images you're going to see now um, were created within this year. Um, it's all about personal growth. Um, uh, some of us have had to stay quarantined or work from home. Um, I worked from, ho from home for the first three months and I, and then now, and then I had to go to back to work. So the transition has been very difficult. So I decided to start a art journal and it's a little journal. I mean, this, this piece here in itself is five by like seven inches, super small, it's watercolor. And I decided to, to create these illustrations um, and tell a story, tell how I felt. And this one in specific, it's like, we need a balance. So, you know, we just can't, like we all need, all human beings need a balance, uh, good and bad, right? You can't just be one or the other, we just we need both. Um, so uh, this image is watercolor, uh, pen and uh, color pencil. Okay, thank you. Can we see these, some of the others that are, and this is, are the, Nancy, are these all from the same journal? These are all from the same journal. Um, and this one is also, um, this one is about um, growth within yourself. And if you see like the leaf coming out of like the belly button area, it's like life is coming out of, like creation is coming out of you. It doesn't have to necessarily be uh, become like being a mother, but it could be like art wise um, and just, just growth, growth overall in life. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay, let's see some others. This one, um, this one was pretty much about the seasons, the four seasons, and how we as human beings evolve. We're never the same. Like normally in the summer, you know, I think I feel like we're all kind of like, oh, hey, let's go party because it's hot out. And then in the winter, you're kind of like more more thoughtful. Um, so each each person has phases that they go through in their life, and I also. Feel like that that applies to emotionally as well. Great. Next, uh, thank you. Next image. Mm -hmm. Hope it's going on here. This one is also growth. Mm -hmm. It represents growth. I mean, it's pretty pretty basic, uh, but this watercolor, colored uh, colored pencils and ink. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Let's see that. Let's continue through here. Mm -hmm. This one is in Spanish. It says buscando sanar por mi por, por wait buscando I'm looking to heal, but my heart weighs too much. So um, my journey in, in becoming a mother has been difficult. So mm -hmm. the, the weight and chain is around my waist because it's weighing me down. 
Um, and I have, I have like the hope uh, of just kind of like clinging to like creation to life. So um, this piece was very deep for me. Um, within this time uh, that we've been going through and with COVID and whatnot has made me reflect a lot on, um, on myself and made me realize that, you know, um, what society puts on women, like, oh, by the age of 30, marry with a white, with a house and a white picket fence and kids is, is not for everybody. Um, and sometimes it's not in your, your, your deck of cards, it's played to you, you know, like you just kind of have to accept and embrace the now and be grateful. And I am grateful and I am blessed. And it took me a long, a long time to realize that, um, and sometimes things don't come out the way you expect them to, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. and I know, uh, Nancy, at one point you talked about how you decided that art is your baby right in this moment. Absolutely. Art is my baby. I mean, I have, I've, it's so weird because I think about, like, I've had so much doubt and I've always applied so much pressure and focus on something that when something's meant for you, it's so easy right? And art has just been so easy for me. Um, and it always saves me in the end. It always does. Like, it, it, it just comes natural to me. And, and I'm always happy when I'm doing it. When I was pursuing to, to have the child and I was doing the um, injections, uh, the hormone injections, um, it, 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 it took a toll on my body and I was miserable. I was miserable because I wasn't letting things just naturally happen. I was like forcing things because I had, because I had to have a child at this age. I had to do it. And I don't even know why I was rushing myself, mm -hmm. but I felt pressure from society, even from my mother and like my family, because they're old school. They're like, oh, when are you going to have a kid? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and, and all that pressure was what made me feel like I had to do this. And I realized now that I don't. That I just have to create art. That's what makes me happy. And if a baby's meant to be in my life, and then it will happen. But as of right now, I'm just focused on my art, and that's what makes me happy. Thank you. This is this is these are uh, very powerful stories that the three of you are, are sharing. Uh, may we see the the next slide or two so we can get a sense of those other images? Mm -hmm. More growth. Yeah, more growth. Mm -hmm. Can we see the next slide? This is patience. This, this, I, <laughs> I was having a tough day at work, and I'm like, Lord, give me patience. So I did this, <laughs> this drawing. <laughs> like, yes, <indeed. laughs> and that, and, and we can see it. It looks like you're drawing, a pot, you're, you're drawing it from your core here, <laughs> uh, right? And then, okay, let's, let's see uh, the next images. Oh, uh, this one is, um, <laughs> this. I was on vacation and I just felt very sensual. I felt like, wow, you know, we we women, we're sensual beings. And we gotta embrace that. I feel like, I feel like a lot of times um, it's exploited, you know, like there's women wearing booty shorts or whatever. And I feel like there's a certain, there's a certain, there's a certain sensuality of a woman that doesn't have to be like just kind of thrown in your face. Like, you know, we could just be be. You can just be and we're sensual and we should embrace it and not exploit it, in my opinion. But um, this is what this represents, sensuality. Beautiful. Thank you. This is so thank you to the three of you for sharing your your images. What I'd like to do now is uh, take a lot. Let's go back and think about those comments and let's go back and look at the mural again. And I have some questions for you. Um, based on, on lots of conversations that I, that I was privileged to overhear because it was a communal mural. It was, so there was a lot going on in the museum. It was, it's not the kind of thing that, that happens overnight. Um, and so here's, here are the three artists in front of the finished mural, um, the Garden of the Divine Feminine. And let's just take, a, if we could take a look at one or two of those details. Okay, oh, but sorry, go back. I don't know if we moved. There we go, I just wanted to show, uh, there are the three artists working collaboratively over the span of several weeks. And to the next slide, please. 
I, I thought that these these details are great and, I, and were key to the conversation that we that we will have. Let's see the next slide. Aha, uh -huh. I'm going to stop there for a moment. So uh, this one goes out to all three of you. And I, I, the fun part is when you're working with three people, I guess I'll let you all decide who, who gets to answer first. Um, you all knew of each other's work. You were, you know, you were all well aware of, of what type of work you each did, but this was the first time that you were creating a, a project all together, just the three of you. Um, I've highlighted the, here these uh, these spray cans and that and that ladder um, because I and I got to watch the three of you climbing up and down that ladder multiple numerous times over the course of, of the making of this. Can you just tell us about your the process of of three women artists coming together to um, if if I can use a you know if I can use an analogy to give birth to this mural um, together. Who would like to start with just that process? The, the, I, just, just the three of you and your thinking and your pro and, and anything that emerged that was unexpected from this process. Tori, you should go because you were saying a beautiful yes. <laughs> yeah, you should go, oh, Tori. <laughs> you said a beautiful yes, <laughs> Listen, I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Because I, 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 I was just like, listen, I just want everybody to know because so many people were asking, did you just paint this part? Did you just do this? thing like they were trying to compartmentalize our process yeah. and it was like no we all literally worked on each other almost on top of each other like master was saying <laughs> things up and going down and you know it was so great and I have to say I know this might sound corny to people but we really worked so well together our egos were thrown away out the window and it would be almost like we could read each other's mind and what was really beautiful too, there were times when like, I'm on the floor, maybe Nancy's right next to me, Patty comes and puts something. I turn around, she done put a flower on top of something, I just <laughs> put something down. You know, and we were just like all cool about it. We were checking in with each other. Um, and so what I saw was that it was in layers. Like we literally, I think we all touch every single part of that wall some way, somehow, mm -hmm. whether we were doing it together on the same day or whether we were working separately. So when people ask me, I'm like, no, we all touched every piece, our hearts and everything. We all worked together. We were almost like one. It was just like we're working together. Yeah. yeah. How about you? Like Pat? a bunch of bunch of ants. So there's a saying that goes, um, an ant on its feet can do more than an elephant lying down. I feel like we were all ants, worker ants, you know, just working together, creating this piece, melded like one, and then this beautiful piece came out. So yeah, thank you for letting me get that out. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Patty, what would you add to that thought? I think that Katori kind of hit it on the nail. It was. It, I think it's so easy to kind of get into a project when it's just three women and, and we all have sort of similar styles, but different styles. Um, and this perception of, of it, it being hard to work with each other. But in this particular situation, it wasn't, it wasn't hard at all. Um, I think that we fed off of each other's energy and we learned from one another. Like I, I learned a lot, whereas like Katori and I, we use a lot of, actually Katori, myself and Nancy, we use a lot of different materials on, in our artwork. Uh, we do a lot of 3D stuff. So I think that this marriage, the three of us, I, I, I think Masha, you, you, you did a really good job with searching three women that would work really well um, together. Cause I feel like we're very different, but then we're very similar. Um, in a lot of ways and our egos kind of what Katori says your egos uh, like we our ego it wasn't there you know it was just like this is this is so um this this mural is so empowering to to us as individuals you know it has to do with women it has to do with our lives so it touched us all in different angles and I feel like we were just so we were just like you know this is this is our story you know so it just, it meshed really well. Like there was no, it just meshed. Our energies really embodied it. And, and it looks like one cohesive piece. And I yeah. feel like that's why, because we were really trying to tell our own stories. Like the, the mural is, is a very powerful, I mean, it talks about women. And I think the three of us are very, are very, very strong. We, we, we embody that. Like we talk really highly of, of our journey as a woman. 
And thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Patty. Uh, I'm going to leave this image up for a second and ask Nancy to chime in on this other aspect. Uh, there's some spray cans here. There's a ladder here. And you just uh, brought up something very interesting, Patricia, and we've all talked about. Nancy, why don't you tell the audience and, and maybe your, uh, your own thoughts. There was something really interesting that happened while you three women were painting this mural. And it, the, as a reminder to everyone on this call, this exhibition is called Women to the Fore. And it, it showcases more than fit 40 uh, female identifying artists. And yet something very interesting happened. <laughs> uh, um, Nancy, could you just share with the audience what took place? Uh, and I have these images up of this ladder and this paint. because uh, I think it, it sparked a memory for me. Could you tell our audience what happened during the making of this mural? Yeah, while, while we were all working and this couple passed by, this gentleman, um, that day, Jose and Evan had stopped by the mall. Oh, Nancy, I think you have to move up to your mic. I can't hear you, Nancy. I oh, know, we can't. Nancy, can you hear me? Yes, yes, now we can. So that day, Jose and Evan uh, stopped by to help us. And uh, there was this gentleman there. He saw me, Katori, and Patty working on the mural, but he asked the girls if the guys were the ones who created the mural. <laughs> and we were all just kind of like, what? wait, uh, no. We all were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he actually asked, he actually asked if, if um, if, yeah, he's, he asked if Jose was the one, yeah, what you said, he asked if Jose was the one that, that, um, that was the main artist. That's what he said. Was Jose the main artist? And he yeah, asked Katori, we right, Katori? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I turned around and I artist. said, no, he's actually our assistant. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I thought that was a really interesting moment that the three of you were there and uh, how to navigate that. And, um, and even, you know, again, just it, that interesting reminder that even in an exhibition entitled Women to the Four, that the, someone walked in and the assumption was that you were assisting um, this um, man in the galleries. Um, why don't we go to that? <laughs> why don't we go to that? That, that was a good for us. And he, his look, he was in disbelief. I just want to add to it. Yeah. He really was in disbelief, even though, you know, Patty and Nancy like jumped quicker than I could say, because I was just like, what? But he was in disbelief, even after he was told. He still was looked like he was confused. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, I, yes, it really was something. So uh, let's go to the next slide. The next detail. The next slide. And um, yes. Okay. Mm. All right. Yes. This this is something that you now you the three of you have touched on it, and I'm going to just put it out there, and I'd like to back up and 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 let you talk about it. This was a very intentional um, addition to the mural. Um, the three of you have talked about some very powerful topics so far about. Um, about um, motherhood and nurturing and giving birth or not giving birth. Um, could you talk to our audience about why you felt so strongly about this representation being part of the mural? And actually, if we could fast forward, if we could go forward one, uh, one other slide to see these images here. So we could, okay, so that's one detail. Let's go back to that other image. Um, would the three of you weigh in on, on this? Because I know you felt very strongly about this, this, uh, this image incorporated in your mural. Nancy, you want to start? Uh, sure. Um, so, um, so the, the uh, indigenous women, um, she kind of was kind of blowing a wish. That wish could be, um, you know, it, it could represent a lot of things. Uh, for me, it was the wish of becoming a mother uh, and wishing for a baby. Um, but it can also represent um, the wish to create, uh, not necessarily a life, but like this art um, or an idea. Um, that's, that's where I went with, with it. Um, and, and, and it's just kind of like the spirit of, of creation um, overall. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Uh, who's, did any, did Patty or Katori, did either of you want to, um, to address that? Patty, you wanna go? 
Sure. Um, for me, uh, similar to kind of Nancy, it was more so, again, uh, the wish to, to create a dream. Um, I think so often within my age, you know, you, you hit a certain age, you're like, oh, well, you, you, you need to have a child or the society tells you that, you know, this is what you need to do. And in my experiences, that's something that I don't want to do, you know, and I'm okay with that. And for me, birthing could be a dream, could be me nurturing a, um, an idea, um, me nurturing um, another another young artist that's coming up. Uh, so for that, it's just that that wish of just um, dreams mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. So that that's kind of where I was where mm -hmm. where I see it. Thank you. Um, and for me, I just wanted to just say real quick that there before I forget that there's symbolism within the mural. So that was yeah. one of the symbols. And one of the fun things that I like to do when people came, I used to say, and I identified about 11. Can you find the 11 symbols? So um, guests were looking, and if you go, if, if anyone audience here goes, try to see if you could, well, you'll probably get some of the secrets now, but try to figure out you know, the 11 symbols because they were put in there for a purpose and it supports the uh, mural. So this symbolism here for me, um, definitely had to do with what the lady said exactly, but I just want to add this, and I thought this was wonderful. Um, another saying, when you educate a man, you educate an individual, and when you educate a woman, you educate a gener generation. And what that basically means, you know, we're giving birth and we're you know, women are basically, you know, nurturing um, and giving birth in this um, whole this whole mural. OK, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about celebrating women and, and, and what they give, you know, and we we can argue, OK, fine, you know, men do the same thing. Right. They are very nurturing and caring. But I'm really talking about, you know, having that life in you and birthing it into the world physically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank uh, you. You're, it, it's true. It is. They're distinct. They're they're shared, but distinct ways of, of approaching a situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what I'd like to do is, um, if we could go to um, the you know, go to the end where we have a group image of the three artists, and I'd like to talk to. I mean, you might have to, to zip through as we go through. This is good. We get another walkthrough of everyone's work. And I want to talk to. You, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for, uh, and it's the group image of the artists. There we go. Thank you. All right, <laughs> that was a that was a wonderful opening night, a wonderful socially distanced opening, a different kind of opening due to the fact that we're in unusual circumstances, but very powerful nonetheless. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for sharing those very personal components and, and your thinking um, and your life experiences. Um, everything from a journey of of, um, of of choice of motherhood being taken away in one case, as uh, Katori, as you talked about. Um, making a decision to take the pressure off um, and not and not decide right now for Nancy and for Patty to have the the option to say maybe not me maybe not right now like maybe so I think that's a really important choice for women um, or, or, or a, a, an important conversation that, that that we all that we all need more insights on and I would say that just the fact that we're having this conversation and the three of you are talking about it just lifts the know what would you call it? the shame that that women carry about not being not fitting in ideally into society right I, i'm really excited i know that you're all working on a lot of projects 2021 it already sounds like a busy exciting productive year i was wondering if um i'll start with uh patricia um could you tell the uh, our audience about what's coming up in 2021 for you what should our audience be looking for? So um, we're, I, we have a non-for-profit that's called We Art One right now. We actually have a space on North Broadway. Uh, we're in the process of renovating it and doing, you know, um, starting up programs for the youth uh, and, you know, building, basically building. Um, myself, personally, as an artist, I'm actually working on doing, um, sound healing. I do sound bowls, sound, sound healing. And that's something that I'm bringing into the Yonkers community right now because it's something that's been helping me. 
um, as an individual. So that's, I want to give that back. But right now the focus is, we're also like really focusing on We Are One and uh, building, just continuing to build and uh, reaching out to other local young artists that need a safe space to create out of. Thank you. And that was, it's going to be a wonderful addition to our city and our community and our county. Uh, Nancy, you. could you tell us what is what what should we be looking out from you for for you and from you in 2021? I'm also part of the We Are One Artist Collective, and I'm, I'm helping out organizing uh, workshops. Um, so that's the, uh, I'm working on that. I'm also always creating. Um, I have a few murals that are in the works. Uh, so just doing some preliminary sketching now and finishing up school. <laughs> just yeah. finishing that up and uh, hopefully figuring out when uh, I can. Uh, graduate and what that's gonna be like so that's what that's what i've i've been up to <laughs> that's a lot in 2021 and katori what should we be looking for from you in 2021 yes 2021 embrace it all right so um we started our for wellness which is a zoom platform that was developed by evan bishop and louisa vibes and myself to provide an artistic safe haven um for all creatives to create art, discuss current issues. And for 25 weeks, we did this and it was wonderful. We are going to continue that, not in that way, but we're going to be interviewing artists and, and giving other artists an opportunity that wasn't a part of that collective to join with us. And we're gonna do certain programs. So look out for that. Um, also just me personally, I'm looking forward to doing more murals inside and out. Um, teaching classes, of course, and uh, doing art collaborations, maybe, you know, whatever comes my way with other people, because I love sharing. I'm almost also an actress, so I'm going to do performances, um, most importantly, mentoring, sound healing, which I also do like um, Patty does, um, using my heart and my art to heal. So that's what's going to be happening in 2021. This, uh, well, this is amazing. Well, I think the three of you, can, uh, it's safe to say that the three of you embody the title of this exhibition, Women to the Four. These are th uh, three <laughs> women to the four, formidable women, talented artists, and those who give back. Um, and it, this is, uh, it has been such a, a wonderful experience for us at the museum to watch this mural grow. I wanted to give some, uh, some space if the three of you are open to a few questions. Um, so if there's anyone on our chat here who would like to pose a question in the chat here. Um, I'd love to be able to share it with, we'll take, we'll take a, our presentation away. Now we have our, it's great when you get artists, right, live that you can ask them a question about their process or their work or um, what's coming up next in our city. Let's see, do we have any coming in? Let's see. They might be coming on Facebook. I know that's, someone is uh, saying uh, that they love your contagious creative energy. That's, um, and I think that that, <laughs> I think that, is, that is true. It is, it is a contagious thing. I think that's one of the exciting things when you come into the exhibition is it sets the tone, right? It right away. Um, here's a fun one. Can I pose this one to you? There was one day I witnessed, you were there, the three of you I think were there and there was a man staring at the mural and he said, I think that's a, is that a, I, I think that's a, and then what did <laughs> that <say? laughs> A certain part of the female anatomy. And it, it was funny, just, it took, a, it was interesting to watch this <laughs> man come in and say, I think that's a, is that a, and, there's a, and there are mirrors. <laughs> Look into that video. Look into it. <laughs> JJ, yes. Get that energy, get that power. Smell the eucalyptus. Right, right. You know, Smell the flowers. <laughs> yes, draw you in. <laughs> um, let's see, I think we have a, a question here about the materials. Can you, can you talk to us about um, the, the choices that it isn't just a 2D piece, that there are materials. Can you talk a, a bit about the choices you made? Because there were some really interesting choices about what brought this final mural to completion. So me and the girls, we all went to Michael's and um, we all love working with, with our hands. Um, and we, we 
went to get, that was a lot of fun, by the way. No, went to my yeah, school. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Like a shopping spree. <laughs> <laughs> and we went and we were we went crazy in there. We just got a bunch of like false flowers and beads and mirrors and it, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, so we had we incorporated feathers, uh, false flowers, um, leaves, um, mirrors. Uh, Tori spray had, paint. Yeah, yeah, we had spray paint. Mm-hmm. Tori had a bunch of stuff going <laughs> in. She had this beautiful, she has a, 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 her own like jewelry um set and she like keeps like all these like little trinkets and stuff. So it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. That's that is great. Uh, they, so now people are asking about will you do do you will you consider future collaborations? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I th- I find that we, we work really well together, uh, like the three of us. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely see that in the future. Yeah. Um, and then we are, uh, I see a question about how the mural will be preserved. So this is an ephemeral mural. We, we did, um, so the museum has um, uh, a set number of, exi- you know, an exhibition square foot feet and galleries and so uh, and probably those of you who have come to past exhibitions maybe got to experience uh, as an example the wonderful Hudson River that was conceived by Maya Lin when she took over the galleries with a flood of green marbles um, as the, just some of you I know experienced that in person um, and that was a, a, a moment in time uh, so what we did as a, an institution was we wanted to make sure to to preserve the, the, this mural in one way, shape or form. So it has been professionally photographed. Um, and we've also created um, a, a stunning set of note cards um, that we can use. And we also have the high resolution. Uh, we have a very, very high resolution file so that we will be able to re- reproduce this image in other ways, shapes or forms. So uh, while the mural will be temporary in our spaces as an ephemeral part of an exhibition, we're very pleased that we have very high resolution digital assets so that we can continue to use this. And so can the artists. Uh, yeah, so that, again, that, another question we, people are waiting to, to find out if the three of you will be co- collaborating again. So I think that you, I think you, while we have you live, we're going to make you promise that you will do that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to give you, the three of you space uh, right now just for your own concluding comments. If, uh, you know, whoever would like to go first uh, bef- in our final minutes here before we ex- um before we end our time here, would you like to just give your own thoughts on being in a show with 150 years of art and over 40 female identifying artists? What did it mean to you? Well, I, I, um, it was, it was an amazing um, experience. Um, me and Patty, we actually, we, we always felt that there was a need for an exhibit like Woman to the Four. And so um, we actually made a, a, an art exhibit, but it was years ago, but we created it because we didn't find any, and you know, there was nothing here. And then Mantra, you came and you were like, no, we gotta do something. And you bought this exhibit and you got all these amazing artists. And, and it, was, it was truly an honor to paint with, with uh, Katori and Patty. Um, it was an amazing experience. It was that we were dancing with each other's mm-hmm. energy and we created and burnt this beautiful mural. And and even though I, I know eventually it's gonna be taken down and it is preserved with an image just to, to, to be able to have, have worked on it and for people to have seen it in person, it it it, it, it fills my heart with joy. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Patty, for you, was there any uh, any particular thoughts on being part of an exhibition of over 40 women? Yeah, I've, I am. Uh, for me, I was just uh, still to this day, I'm still very like, wow, I'm in a museum. This is my first time ever being in a museum, doing a mural in a museum um, in my own hometown um, with local artists and also artists that are from all around the world that, you know, touch so many different lives. So I think that the opportunity to just say, you know, I did this, you know, I did this in my own hometown and, um, giving that, that dream to the next generation to know that they can do something like that. Um, I feel like I'm so honored by that, you know, and I, and I, and I want those younger 
artists that are coming up from Yonkers or wherever to know that those opportunities are available for them. So I thank you, Masha, for, for creating this space for us to do that and creating the marriage between us three. Because I find that I don't, I don't think that we would have get, ha, maybe not have given this opportunity if, if you didn't think of the idea. So I'm just really grateful for the Hudson River Museum to give me that opportunity and just honored to be able to, to say that, hey, I did that and I can say it to the next younger artist that's coming up. Like I did this, Nancy did this, Katori did this, you can do it too. There's, there's, there's it, you know, we can all contribute in some sort of way. So I feel like, um, I was given the opportunity to give um, to give opportunity or not, not to give the idea to the next generation that things like this are possible. Thank you. Okay, and I, I want to underscore um, that while we might have started our conversation, that um, so many props go to Laura Vukels and Victoria's yes, interaction, the two curators of the exhibition, for pulling together uh, all of these in, uh, incredible artists together, and so. Um, Wait, sorry, did I just miss that? Who's uh, last? I can go again. Katori, it's Katori. My turn. turn. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I want to thank you, Masha. I want to thank everybody that yeah. had anything to do with putting this together and giving us the opportunity. Um, I'm a true believer in being happy. And um, this made me very, very happy. And to work with Nancy and Patty, you know, was wonderful. And I think that this mural is making people happy. Um, I believe in living our lives with passion. Um, and I think when people look at that, I hope they get that passion and that feeling about, you know, the things that women did in the art mm -hmm. world. Um, I believe that this is a connection. So I hope that it connects everybody that comes to see it. I know conversations were coming and going from it. And I believe that you should really embrace who you are and just have that beautiful energetic um, presence. So I think that that mural did everything and that even though it's just, and I cannot pronounce the word, so I'm not gonna try it, but temporary, it's going to live on forever mm -hmm. and ever. And that, you know, the postcards and anything else that you guys put stuff on that, you know, that people can have and embrace and remember that moment, it'll be there. And, yes. um, that's all I have to say is if you haven't seen it, you have to January 4th to see it. I know this is a plug, but I just want to put that in there. Try to go see it. The, the, the museum really practices um, safe measures for COVID-19. So please, please rush out there and see it. Um, and we love you guys for even joining us today. Thank you so much. And we're going to th thank you to the three of you. And I'd like, I, it's been such an honor and uh I'm going to use the word joy. I think in this season, we're allowed to also add, add the word joy. I want to say thank you for adding joy um, in addition to very powerful lived experiences and the mural. I know on the last slide, we wanted to make sure that everyone on the call um, had your, your social media information so that they could follow you individually. These are three women who I'm sure this, this last hour has proven um, have a lot going on and a lot coming up and everyone should be following their next moves. So if we could have that slide, Let's see if we can pull that up with your Instagram and websites. It's coming. I want to make sure that people mark this. And I want to say thank you to everyone else who's joined us for this call today and for these. Uh, oh, this is great. We're getting to run through these images again. Um, just thank you, everyone, for your comments and for joining this conversation and for coming to the museum. And uh, and yes, and to underscore what Katori mentioned, we sorry, uh, I'm going the wrong way. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> and uh, the museum does have uh, safety protocols in place with uh, very limited admission into the museum gallery, so you can have a lot of space around you to see this wonderful work. Um, it is on view uh, into the beginning of January. And here you go. These are the social media um, and websites, um, all the information you need for Katori Walker, Patricia Santos, and Nancy Mendez, um, three women who absolutely embody the title Women to the Fore. So thank you everyone for joining us and from all of us at the Hudson River Museum, um, a great thank you and warm wishes for a brighter 2021. We'll see you in person soon, and if not, right here online. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>